Why do Lutherans say that baptism actually saves you? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and I'm here with my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt, and this is Talks with Dad Rod. I love this. This this one is so much fun, and I know, <laughs> and I know it frustrates people, and in a certain sense, it doesn't make more friends for us, but but it's it's really important. Why do we say that? Why do we say that baptism actually saves you? Because texts in the New Testament say it. That's that's just too simple. <laughs> we joke, and I go, "Okay, well, thank you for uh, joining us today." Because there you go. Um, First Peter three twenty one says, "Baptism now saves you," and we love to play with the bat. We love playing in the baptismal waters as Lutherans. We love yep. it. I was using an example just recently, and I wanted to post it somewhere, and I just wrote it up, and I didn't post it. That that God through His Word spoke things into existence in Genesis. So in Genesis, we get God said, let there be light, and there was light. And I think pretty much across the board, Christians don't argue over whether that actually occurred or not. Mm -hmm. I think that's they, true. They would confess that that's mm -hmm. what happened. Mm -hmm. If we say that God puts his word into baptism so that you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in accordance with what we read in Peter and in Acts, then we start getting a little squirrely. Well, God's word can create light and can create the heavens and the earth, but God's word can't go into water and save as God says it does. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> that makes us a little more uncomfortable, right? That, that Scripture tells us that, but I, uh, it's, it can't be that simple. All right. Be baptized and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You and your children. This promise is for you and your children. So, you know, one of the arguments, one of the discussions about this is that in the, in, 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 when, when you would see in Scripture places where people are called to repentance, they would repent, right? It's the order, right? Yeah. It's the order. <clears throat> they repent first and then they're baptized. And so this is made believe in hard Christ coded, and be right? baptized, right? Yeah, that, that that the that you would believe and then you'd be baptized, and but then then you get to this place in Acts. In Acts, speaks as though. In Acts, it's very clear that when you're baptized with God's word in the water, because it's God's word, it's you know water is water water. When, when God's word is applied to you, it does something. We recognize that God's word can create ex nihilo, out of nothing. We recognize that in Genesis. But when if we look at the idea of God's word in baptism, creating faith. Yep. Um, when I had students at Westmont College and we'd finally come to the section on sacraments, and it wasn't a Lutheran textbook. I picked one that was kind of intervarsity ish And uh, <clears throat> so my assignment to the students, 70 evangelicals, my assignment was <clears throat> use any biblical helps that you can. It was pre-laptop computer days. Use any helps that you want to. Find every text in the New Testament that speaks of baptism and read it. Don't have to take notes. Don't have to memorize it. Don't have to anything. Just read it, then we'll talk. And right now you can do that simply on like BibleGateway.com, which is one of my go-tos for right. that. Right, it's even easier nowadays. But that was their assignment before we started the discussion. And my rationale was exactly what you're talking about. Have you ever read these? And what, what? And I know we've covered this in another episode. When the students would do as you said and read the scriptures, what was what was the result? What would you see? Um, a lot of students were honest enough to say, "I've never read this before." Or I didn't know that the Bible said this. Right. It was a confession of ignorance. Um, and I tell the story, and I've told it here before, of the one girl, bless her heart, sat in the front row, 
And she raised her hand and she said, but Professor, you can't get spiritual benefits from material elements. I said, no, you're with me on this. She said, no, I'm not. You sound Roman Catholic. I said, you just haven't thought about it. Have you bet your eternal life on particular blood shed from particular Jewish veins on one particular cross one particular day long ago. And she says, well, yes. I said, then you're with me. So uh, what we would say then about the story you're saying is, is this is an example of where you see the physical elements which are Jesus' body. Mm-hmm. It's really about the mm-hmm. Jesus body mm-hmm. actually saves his yeah. actual body, the the actual blood, and the water. And and I'll, let's d- dip into this real quickly. What is the significance of the water that poured from his side? <laughs> There's only one verse like that in John, but uh, it isn't wild to say. Here's a clue. It isn't wild. There just aren't a lot of verses. So we'll stick to the verses, but I, I, I really like that one, and I know that we have enough pastors who've interwoven. Yep, and they have a right that, to do that, that. It has meaning. It's just that Scripture doesn't speak of that very much, so right. we tend to not go too deeply into that. Right. But I really think that's a, you know, you can really, that makes sense. I, I mean, if we go to heaven and we find out, yeah, the yeah. waters that poured from my side, yeah, you were baptized with the waters, yep. and so forth and so on. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be surprised. Not going to sit here and make a, a doctrine out of that. But yep. So we do. So we believe what Scripture says that it does this thing, and that when Scripture says that this promise that you receive, you know that, that God God gives you a promise, and when you're baptized, you're brought into that promise as right. a recipient of the promise. That's right. And a lot of times the offense is, but that's way too easy. And and you say, well, wait a minute. Just read it as it stands. You're not, you don't have to evaluate easy or hard. Just read the text. Tell me what you think you see. And often what we, what we have is people going, well, I just don't, what I see makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we'll, we'll come back to this again at another date. But, uh, yeah, uh, the Lutheran perspective on baptism is, is uh, extraordinarily textually based. Um, and, and I know we differ uh, from a number. This is why we bring it up, because it's, it's just going to the text. We just go to the text and say, what does it say? We hope this is helpful, probably uh, annoying for many, uh, and you enjoy yourself with us anyway, and you come back and, and be annoyed or enjoy yourself again. Come to 1517.org for more, and we'll see you on social media. Talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more, and please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it.